Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Have mercy upon us, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out our transgressions, wash us thoroughly from our iniquity, and cleanse us from our sins, for we acknowledge our transgressions. And our sins are wrought before us against thee, thee only, have we sinned and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest, and be clear when thou judgest. Behold, we were shaping in iniquities. And in sin did thy mothers conceive us. Behold, thou desire truth in the rural part, and in the hidden part, thou shalt make us to know wisdom. Wash us with the blood of Jesus, and we shall be clean. Wash us, and we shall be whiter than snow. Make us to hear joy and gladness. That the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. I thy face from our sins and blot out all our iniquity, creating us a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within us. Cast us not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. Restore unto us the joy of thy salvation, and uphold us with thy free spirit. Then shall we teach transgressors thy ways, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. Deliver us from blood guiltiness, O God, thou God of our salvation, and our tongue shall sing aloud of thy righteousness. O Lord, open thy lips, and a man shall show forth thy praise. For that desireth no sacrifice, else would we give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offering. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contract heart. O God, thou wilt not despise. Do good in thy good pleasure unto our selections. Build thou the world of salvation around us. Then shall thou be pleased with thy prayers and thanks. Then shall we offer dance and songs of praises around the holy altar. Amen. Glory. Glory be to the Father. 
it is only you that pays the price. You died so that we can live. You rescued us from the shackles of death. Your precious blood speaks volume. And lo and behold, we are here today in remembrance of the mighty works that you did. Father, glorify yourself today. In whatever way that we are falling short of your glory, forgive in Jesus' name. Remember the death of your son on the cross. Father, set us free from sin today. Our prayer, our worship, our singing, let it be acceptable before you. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Our last prayer, our Father. Hallowed be thy name. As it is now. As we forgive those that trespass against us. As the kingdom. Amen. We shall start by singing him one five six. Only Bella Ara today.
commemoration of when man became free. Father, we thank you for this grace. We honor you for this grace. We glorify you for this grace. Many will want to be here. But because you do as you please, you are the porter that makes whatever you want from the clay. We thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for the protection. We thank you for our families. We thank you for the church of God. I accept our thanks in Jesus' name. We thank you for the peace that we have in you. We thank you for all that we desire in our heart. Even when it is delayed, you still give us hope that at the appointed time, that which you have destined and covenanted will come to pass. Father, we thank you for this hope in you. I accept our thanks in Jesus' name. As we come before you, let our service of today be like the offering of Noah. Let it come up to you, O Lord. Accept us, O Lord. Be with us, O Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. In 380. Our
Jehovah, Jesus Christ, Michael Mimo, a pata ye raye ibi sadiwa, a wa dupe dupe a yo a yin logo a gbe yin ga, ni tori pe she ni tori wikpe a nu yin duro titi lai lai, a dupe fun yin rapada e mi wa, ni pa yiku yin ni ori gi a gbe lebu, o la yin yo go ni fun oru kwa mi mo yin, Oluwa Olorun alagbara Adupe nitori wipe ka wa ye loni Ogo Olayin ni fun oruko mimo yin An bere fun yi tin se isegun Asin bere fun abo to daju Nipa iku yin te ku lori igi agbelebu loni Oluwa e wa segun fun wa E je yin to da sile lori igi ni Calvary ko segun fun wa E je yin to da sile lori igi ni Calvary ko wo wa so E je yin to da sile lori igi ni Calvary ko se iwe nu mo fun oko wa ani agbara e je yin to so ara kiku wa di iye ni oruko Jesu mu wa iye ni oruko Jesu wo wa so ni oruko Jesu fun wa ni emi gigu Afi gbogbo kan to wa ni irin irin ajo ile yin lowo eyin olorun abu ati ipamo esegun riri fun wa ke segun airi fun wa e fi abo yin to ni pon to gbo oro e fi bo wa ni gbogbo bi ti a ni eweje ti a ta gbode abo yin ko daju ni ibe oluwa olorun iran lowo agbe yi tin se ijo elephant and castle le yin lowo oluwa di ijo na mu Oluwa segun fun ijo yi Oluwa fi abo to ni pon bo ijo na wa pelu wa titi do pe an tesi waju ni inu asina Oluwa ma ba wa lo gbogbo yi tin se ajura wo ti ojo ni ma jo lo lori asan gbo ke gba ke fi ase si ese ni tori wipe ti gbo ese ni tori wipe ti gba ogo olayin ni fun oruko mi mo yin Jesus Continue by singing in two eight four Igbala Dilo. Igbala Dilo ni ayi jami mo ebobi beti. Ah. Uh -huh. 
is taken from gospel according to St. Mark chapter 15 from verse 21 to 32 Gospel according to St. Mark, chapter 15, verses 21 to 32. And they compel one Simon, a Syrian who passed by, coming out of the country the father of Alexander and Rufus to bear his cross. And they bring him unto the place Golgotha, which is being interpreted the place of his call. And they gave him to And they gave him to drink wine mingled with myrrh, but he received it not. And then, and when they had crucified him, they parted his garment, casting lots upon them, what every man should take. And it was the third hour, and they crucified him. And the superscription of his accusation was written over the king of the Jews. And with him they crucified two thieves, the one on his right hand and the other on his left. And the scripture was fulfilled, which said, And he was numbered with, our transgressors, with the transgressors. And they that passed by rolled on him, wagging their heads and saying, Ah, though thou destroyed the temple and buildest in it in three days, Save thyself and come down from the cross. Likewise also, the chief priest, mocking said amongst themselves with the scribes, he saved others, himself he cannot save. 32, the last verse. Let Christ the King of Israel descend now from the cross that we may see and believe and that they that were crucified with him reviled him may the lord bless the hearing and the reading of his words Amen. gloria Glory be to God. 
to the Father, to the Son, to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his holy Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended to the hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the celestial church of Christ, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Jehovah. Jesus Christ. Only my care. At this hour, O oh Lord, let your Holy Spirit rest upon us. Teach us your word. Let your word in us multiply and bring our fruits. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Hallelujah. 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 We give glory to God, as we always do. Because we are alive today to mark a very, very special day. Because once man was chased away from the presence of God, and the volunteer came, and the volunteer was Jesus Christ. He came to this world. to go through what we would go through and eventually pay the price. So that the key to eternity that was lost in the Garden of Eden will be given back to man. Glory on and adoration to his own name. In continuation of what we had at the nine o'clock service, the lesson that was that I've read, Mark 15, I would like us to look at 27 to 32. And with him they crucified two thieves. Yes. The one on his right hand Mm -hmm. and the other on his left. Yes. And the scripture was fulfilled which Mm -hmm. saith. Mm-hmm. And he was numbered with the transgressions. Yes. And they that passed by rode on him, mm-hmm. wagging their heads, and saying, Ah, thou that destroyest the temple, 
and do this it in three days. Yes. Save thyself and come down from the cross. Yes. Likewise, also the chief priests mock him, said amongst themselves with the scribes, he saved others, yeah. himself he cannot save. Let Christ, the King of Israel, descend now from the cross, that we may see and believe. And they that were crucified with him, yes. reveled him. Hallelujah. This short sermon, I will title it Keeping Calm in the Face of a Storm. Keeping calm in the face of a storm. Think about a mother she gave birth to her child. The child grew. But at some point, the once loving child the once obedient child, the once grateful child changed and became rebellious and would not listen and became the talk of the town. And the child became an eyesore. that deep down in you, the child that you were once proud of, you now moved away. And like our mothers will do once in a while when they really get angry, they will say, if not that, you suck from this my two breasts. I would have. You know Nigerian mothers. And you begin to run courses on that child. And that child that you thought would not change to the original version that you knew now changed but you have cursed that child the child has now changed and is not now doing well because of the curse that you placed on the child are you following me You that now cause the child to now get the message that for the child's way to be straight and for things to come back to normal, you now have to fast for that child that you caused. Eventually, you fasted, fasted, and fasted. You develop what you call peptic ulcer. If you had been patient, if you had been calm enough to know that this situation, this sudden change in that child is a temporal one, maybe you wouldn't have placed the cost on the child. Maybe you will not be in this situation to now begin to fast to reverse the cost that you placed. Such is the story of Jesus. In Luke chapter 4, Luke chapter 4, 
from verse um, 40. Go on, go on. Now when the sun was setting, all they that had any sick with diverse diseases yes. brought them unto him, mm -hmm. and he laid his hands on every one of them yes. and healed them. Yes. And devils also came out of many, mm -hmm. crying out and saying, Thou art Christ, the Son of God. Thank you very much. This was before his crucifixion. They brought their sick, they brought the possessed, and the Bible says all of them got their healing. Are you following me? This same person that healed them, that has been living with them, that was once good to them. You now crucify that same person. He was mocked. He was beaten. He was spat upon. But in all that, he did not say a word. He kept calm in the face of the storm. How many of us are calm when the tide changes and we see the other side of life? Remember the story that I started with. A child that was once good that from some form of reason changed. When you are passing through this storm, in fact, let me tell you, there are people that you think will come to your aid, that you think they are in support of you. They will wash their hands. Like Pilate, Pontius Pilate did. He had the authority to rescue Jesus. Yes, it was written, but it was a man that decided to please the crowd than do what was right. When you are faced with that situation and you see that person that you think, whether rain, whether shine, this person will be with me, and that person turns back and not be in your position and does not have your back, will you still be calm? When that husband that thinks you support you in discipline or putting that child straight is no longer there, would you still be calm? Before the service, I was having a discussion with the chairman who were up there, and I said, the life of Jesus Christ is legendary. You cannot finish teaching it in a day because it unfolds. Even the stories that you've had before, the things that you know before, when you read it again, you still marvel that how possible is this? That is not real. But was real. A man that fed 5,000 with five loaves of bread and two fishes. A man that raised Lazarus. They were all that they saw. Then they acknowledged he was Christ. But when they crucified him, the mouth that said before he was Christ, now said, if you were Christ, come down. 
Such is life. Hallelujah. There's a story that came to mind, 2 Kings chapter 2. When Elisha parted ways with Elijah, the first thing he did was the garment, the ripped garment of Elijah that was with him, he first used it to strike the Jordan. And he parted ways. He walked on dry land. Secondly, they came to him that the land was good in the morning, but the water is bitter and the land was not fruitful anymore. He put salt in the bowl and he went to the source. And the Bible says till today, the water remained purified. If you read that Second Kings chapter 2, 19. And the men of the city yes. said unto Elisha, mm-hmm. Behold, yes. I pray thee, yes. the situation of this city is pleasant, mm-hmm. as my Lord seeth, yes. but the water is naught, mm-hmm. and the ground barren. Mm-hmm. And he said, Bring me a new curse, yes. and put salt therein. Yes. And they brought it to him. Yeah. And he went forth unto the spring of the waters, mm-hmm. and cast the salt in yes. there, and yeah. said, Thus saith the Lord, I have healed these waters. Go to 23. And he went up from thence unto Bethel. After that miracle he did. Go on. And as he was going up by the way. As he was going up by the way. There came four little children Uh out of the city Uh and mocked him Uh and said unto him, Go up, thou bold head. Mm -hmm. Go up, thou bold head. Yes. And he turned back Mm -hmm. and looked on them Uh and cursed them in the name of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And there came forth two she-bears out of the woods and tear forty and two children of them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sit down, my brother, sister. Keeping calm in face of a storm. (laughs) is a gift that we should all ask for. Imagining a prophet that healed the land and shortly after, because children mocked him, he cursed them and those children were devoured. Think about it. What, what, what could be the reason? Do you get angry unnecessarily just after finishing the service and you get home or you are driving home and something happened on the way? And you jumped out of your car with your sutana and you rain curses and you do all sorts road rage. I get angry once in a while. But today's lesson is teaching us that we should develop the ability. We should pray for the ability so that when the tides change, Things that you thought were giving you joy before and they were no longer there. Are you still going to be calm? Are you still going to trust your God? A lot of us will say at three o'clock, Jesus said it has finished. Then it has finished. Then we'll go back to our old ways. I would be, we go back to being the same person. And next day comes, you observe the Passion Week, and you walk around, look as if you've just lost your whatever, and the whole environment will know that this man is moody, all because of Passion Week. 
and after your Good Friday, the Jezebel in you, or whatever comes out again. And it becomes a cycle, an unending cycle without a change. Let this year be the year that you will change and you develop that calmness. That child that you think is no longer responsible, pray. Don't try a knot that you will come back to or not. Some people will say, I will lock the door, I will throw the key. What, of, what happens if you are going to go back through that door? But you have been angry, so much angry, you've thrown away the keys. How do you go through the door that you've thrown away the keys? Even if you are going to call the locksmith, they will charge you an arm and a leg. All because of that little patience in the face of a storm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In everything that we do, let us remember the Passion Week is not a ritual. It's a week of reconciliation. And year in, year out, we should get better. Until we reach the perfection of God in us. I pray that the grace of God that surpasses all understanding will rest upon us. In Jesus' mighty name. A short silent prayer after the sermon. Jehovah, Amen. Jesus Christ, Amen. Holy Michael, Amen. our Father and our God, we thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, Lord. I accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Be with us. Bless us with your spirit. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Let us bring our service to a close by singing five. Five, four.
reason for her, my mother, mother and sister are back away. I want to do 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 to to do 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 to Ni to bi to da wa pada ni to bi to se yi baba gbo pe ko gba yin wa Olorun kan se se ti ko pe meji Ha En to ba mo nure wa mo pe da Ki se mi wa se wa da fi wa laye Ki se agbara wa to bi le le mo mi o le gba na lekun nu Sugbon ni to bi to se ta ni le duro Sugbon ko to se fun wa de ni to den so fun wa ni igba gbogbo yi pe akoko na nsun mo pe ka parada ka yi pada si o ko si ere koko ni mo aibon baba ni tori ko se ni to mo akoko tabi igba ko se ni to mo iseju kon yi ta ma jade sita sugbon re olorun mo gbogbo si bi se gbogbo I want to see your friend, you be in the community, but he worried me. No one, I'm not room. I don't know, she shall me. I'm not a friend, you know, the tower you're fishing. Tell me, you put a seal. To Satan, you're fishing, baby, what do you want? And you know, you're not room, Baba, or Shafa, Baba, what you do before. Me tell you, tell you, but I saw. I said, Bono, I could say, Joe, my life, Bono. Ni to be so fun, I will go to you. If any, I could go for Pata Pata. We will talk about Sifa, you don't go out with it. Me, I'm not room, I'm not room, I'm not room for your fair Jane, you work at the KT light. Do you know what they are not room? Go to the Solidia, believe. Baba, Joe, you put your face. Baba, damn, you go go. And you know that I think one of us she felt like they were. Then you call it, then you see it. I depend on Tibo, I depend on Tisha. Yes, you, oh, no, I want to see our Lord's prayer. Our Father, Kabyas. Kabyas. who art in heaven, I will be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Glory. To the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be. God the Father, the grace of God the Son, that of the Holy Spirit, descend on us all today, because we have come to show ourselves before you this Holy Friday, Good Friday, let it be holy and good for us, all our services of today, accept them all, never leave us alone, now and forevermore.
Can we rise and chant seven hallelujah to praise the Lord? Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.
When this was initially proposed by the Catholic Church, there were actually 12 stations. But in this presentation, we have extended it to 15. Looking at the gospel narrative of the last hour of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's going to be interactive, it's going to be engaging. But please, let us try as much as possible to follow and please let us all try to be quiet. We don't want any noise. It's actually on Netflix, you know, so we are now on Netflix. They are watching us all over the world on Netflix. Eh? So don't let us try and show the side I don't want them to see. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we all be on our, on our seat, please? As the container will be coming in to show us the last hour of our Lord Jesus Christ when he was walking on the surface of the earth. I present to you the station of the cross. in agony in the garden of Gethsemane, and the Bible verse will be Matthew 26 from verse 36 to 41 and it says then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane and said to his disciples sit here while I go and pray over there and he took with him Peter and his two sons of Zebedee and he began to be sorrowful and deeply distressed then he said to them my soul is exceedingly sorrowful even to death. Stay here and watch me. He went a little further 
and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O oh my Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. Then he came to the disciple and found them, found them sleeping and said to, to Peter, What could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Well, um, in this period of um, reflection week, for you know, we, we all know that Jesus Christ died for us. This is the only week, and we are today as a Good Friday. I just want us to reflect that Jesus went through pain because when somebody is in agony, that person is extremely distressed, sorrowful. He fell down. He prayed. He asked God three times that he wish this would not happen to him, but he still did because it has been written. We cannot change it. I just want us as Christians to bear this in mind. We should be very careful, especially when it comes to you know sin. Jesus came and died for our sin, and this is a very period, a very sorrowful period. I just believe that not after this fasting and prayer, we all go back into sin. We should please try and reflect on this and think about Jesus Christ, how he died on the cross for our sin. It's very, very painful, very sorrowful. May God help us all. Amen. Bumi tani moni la yoshi ni basi ba koni siyo tani mo. Station two, and how Jesus was betrayed by Judas, which led to his arrest. And this could be found in the book of Mark 14, reading from verse 43 to 46. Mark 14, verse 43 to 46. And what does it say? And I read. And immediately, while he yet spake, come a Judas, one of the twelve, and with him a great multitude with swords and staffs, from the chief priest and the scribes and the elders. And he that betrayed him had given them Say, whomsoever I shall kiss, that same is he. Take him and lead him away safely. And as soon as he was come, 
He goes straight away to him and said, Master, 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 and he kissed Jesus. And the people that were with him laid their hands on him and took him away. This is a great, this is a great betrayer. A great betrayer indeed for the atonement of our sins. How many of us have we betrayed? How many people have we betrayed as brothers and sisters in Christendom? In our dealings, in our activities, in our relationship with others, we have betrayed people. It shouldn't be the case. We should not follow Judas. We should not do anything that will not edify Christ in our dealings. The Lord Almighty God should give us that spirit to remain truthful, to remain committed, and to be able to serve the Lord to the end of our life. Badura fumi baba majeki sheo Badura fumi omo majeki sheo Nibati weshu badura domo wade station free talking about Jesus faces the Sanhedrin and I will be talking from Luke chapter 22 verses 66 to 71 as soon as it was day the elders of the people both chief priests and scribes came together and led him into their council saying if you are the Christ tell us but he said to them if I tell you you will be, you will be by no means believe and if I also ask, ask you, you will know, you by no means answer me or let me go. Hereafter, the Son of Man will sit on the right hand of the power of God. Then they all said, Are you then the Son of God? So he said to them, You rightly say that I am. And they said, What further testimony do we need? For we have heard it ourselves from his own mouth. In Luke chapter 22, verses 39, Jesus went to the mountain of olives to pray, to not be tempted. It says in the Bible, our Lord's Prayer, don't lead us into temptation. Judas was tempted by money to betray Jesus. Jesus was mocked and beaten. They asked him to prophesy who hit him whilst he was blindfolded, and many other things they blasphemously spoke about against him. According to the gospel, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, was betrayed by G Judas Iscariot. Firstly, the Sanhedrin, according to the gospel, are basically an elite council of priestly and lay elders. They are the highest ruling council of the Jews. At daybreak, the Sanhedrin led Jesus Christ into their council and asked him if he was the Messiah. He replied saying, if I tell you, you will not believe me, and if I ask you, you will not answer. 
but as from now on the Son of Man will sit at the right hand of God Almighty. So they asked, Are you the Son of God? He replied, saying, You say that I am. Then they said among themselves, What else do we need from them, from him? Station 4, um, text is Matthew 26, 69 to 75. Now Peter sat without in the palace, and a damsel came unto him, saying, Thou also was with Jesus of Galilee. But he denied before them all, saying, I know not, I know not what thou sayest. And when he was going out into the pouch, Another crow, and Peter remembered the word of Jesus, which said unto him, Before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. And he went out and wept bitterly. Now, the text is an account of Peter's denial of Jesus the night before he was crucified. And before then, Jesus had already told them especially Peter that was going to deny him three times. And Peter had vowed that he was always going to be there for Jesus, being the right hand man of him. So he was so confident, and you can see that in Matthew 26, 34 to 35. And also it says in Proverbs 16, 18, pride goes before destruction, and a haunted spirit before a fall. And that shows how confident Peter was that, oh, there's nothing that's going to do, you know, stop him for being there for Jesus. And also in Matthew 26, 31, when Jesus told them that they will all fall away, as it has been written that when the shepherd has been, when they strike the shepherd, the sheep will also scatter. And Peter was like, you know, that won't happen. Um, so it also shows that no one is immune against temptation. Let us learn from the mistakes of Peter and identify ways to overcome when temptation comes across our ways. So um, Peter's temptation and why he denied God. Peter was exposed to temptation in this case because of the people he was associated with. He was in a hostile environment. He sat in a company of critics of Jesus. And the company you keep determines your exposure to temptation. That's in Psalm 1, verse 1. A summary of Peter's exposure to temptation. And the first temptation, when the maid came to Jesus and said, you were with Jesus, he said, no, you know, I do not know him. The second time, when he was accused again in Matthew 26, 71 to 72, again he denied, and this time with an oath, that what we do as well, we're like, ah, how long? I don't know, mm -mm, I don't know anything about it. And then thirdly, when he was accused by the people around there, he then began cursing and swearing. And this is one of the things we do as well. We know inside us that what we are saying is bad. Is, you know, we are lying. But we rather curse ourselves and put the Bible on our heads and start saying all sorts. So what led to Peter's denial or Peter's sinning or you know, the temptation? Um, what Paul Peter might befall any Christian who relies on his own strength? Number one, Peter was overconfident. And you can see that in Matthew 26, 33 to 35. When Peter was saying that he would never leave Jesus, being the right hand man, he thought he would always be there, you know, nothing can happen. Number two, lack of watchfulness. 
and not praying as well. That can be found in Matthew 26, 40, or 43. When Jesus took them up, Matthew, um, Peter, James, and John, who were his three strong disciples, he took them up when he, went to, when he went to pray. And he told them to watch and pray. But as human beings, they were all tired. They were, you know, sleeping. They thought, mm, it's one of those things Jesus can pray by himself now, you know. So, you know, that kind of thing. They were sleeping and not taking, you know, notes. And then uh, finally with Peter, it's um, presumptuousness and rushing into danger. When P Jesus was finally arrested and Peter thought, oh, with this, what's going to happen? I can use my own strength and try and save him. And that was when he drew his sword and cut off the ear of the, one of the, um, the priest's um, servants. And Jesus told him, he commanded him to put the sword back and that he who draws the sword dies by the sword. So you can see that Peter was relying on his own strength that you could save Jesus in that situation. So ways to restoration. When this happened and Jesus was arrested, Peter remembered the word of Jesus. And we need to fall back to God's words of strength in such a situation. He left the bad company and he wept bitterly in repentance. He didn't make any excuses. He did not procrastinate to say, ah, this and that and everything. No. And if you look at Proverbs 28, 13, it says, He who conceals his sins does not prosper, but whoever confesses and renounces them finds mercy. Conclusion. Jesus is ready to forgive us and restore our relationship with him, despite our weaknesses and failures. And he's ready to restore us back to a place of trust if we repent. If you look at Corinthians 10, 12 to 13. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed, lest he fall. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted ab above that which you are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that ye may also, you may be able to bear it. To overcome temptation, take heed. Ask God to show you ways of escape and follow the Lord's leading. Do not rely on your own strength and follow what the Spirit says. Jesu ye titi aye. Jesu ye titi aye. I'm going to talk about is uh, Jesus is judged by Pilate, which is going to be found in uh, Mark chapter 15, verse 1 to 5 and 15. 1 to 5 and 15. And uh, after this reading, I'm going to uh, talk a little bit on. Uh, characters 
and judgment with a poem, which I'm going to read to the congregation. The reading goes this way. And straight away in the morning, the chief priest held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council and bound Jesus and carried him away and delivered him to Pilate. And Pilate asked him, Are thou the king of the Jews? And he answering said unto him, Thou seest it. And the chief priest <coughs> accused him of things, but he answered nothing. And Pilate asked him again, saying, Answer thou nothing? Behold, how many things they witness against thee. Five. And Jesus yet answered nothing, so that Pilate marveled. Fifteen. And so Pilate willing to contain the people, released Barnabas unto them and delivered Jesus when he had scourged him to be crucified. Uh, I base this reading on few areas which I'm going to read to you, understanding the test. Pilate is said is in a difficult situation. Why? Pilate does not think Jesus deserved the death penalty, but he does not want to anger the Jewish leaders. Throughout this trial, Jesus' innocence is stressed. And then I base those areas on four areas. Number one, Pilate's wife has had a dream telling her that Jesus is innocent. And she says message to her husband about this. Second, Pilate tried to avoid sentencing Jesus. It was a Passover custom for prisoners chosen by the people to be released. Pilate attempted to use this custom by offering Jesus or Barnabas. Uh, or Barnabas. Matthew described Barnabas as a notorious prisoner. So he was probably a murderer. Pilate attempts to ask the crowd what crime Jesus has committed, but they shall crucify him. Finally, Pilate publicly washes his hands to show that Jesus' death is not his responsibility. In protesting his position as a governor, Pilate has a guilty man released and has Jesus flogged then handed over to be crucified. My, my submission or something on, on this issue, I wrote a poem, and which the poem says, when I think about it, because I'm talking about the judgment and characteristics of an individual, and then as a church, as a Christian, when I think about the death of the grave and the kilos of the sand that are going to be thrown at us. There is no need to harm my brother. When I think of the darkness that has pervades the tomb after it has closed, there is no need to hurt my sister. When I think of the heat driven back by the ground and the amount of water that will draw me during the rains, in that grave, in that grave, I cannot make, I cannot make my neighbor to suffer. When I think that uh, I will be alone and abandoned by all, I prefer to enjoy communion while I'm alive. 
When I think my relationship are cut off by my past, I want perfect future. If I could be reborn and start all over again, I will no longer make mistakes in my actions. After a long meditation, I understood that as all is vanity or not, may God help us to cultivate humanity and love and neighbor. Because vanity only gives vanity, everything will be vanity. Be happy and make someone happy. May God grant us the power to be kind to ourselves, Amen. even our neighbors too. Amen. The Bible says we should love ourselves. How can we make this possible? Be humble, even in the face of your personal challenges. God may raise a standard from where you least expect for your favor as you are kind to others. Forgive others who offend you. Remember you are a sinner too. For this reason Jesus Christ came to take away our sins, being sinless for our sake. Be poor in hearts. Don't shout yourself alone. Be careful in your utterances to avoid hurt and anger. Be born again. Seek for the power of the Holy Spirit to guide. Track and direct your path. Be faithful and trust in God. Do not gossip. Read your Bible every day. Meditate and pray to God always. He will show you, he will show his perfect way of your life. Sing, dance, celebrate yourself, smile, laugh to be happy. Enjoy wonderful Easter holiday. Remember, remain blessed under his special refuge. May the grace of God be with us all. Amen. Pilate wanted to establish the truth, but his hands are tied because he has seen that the Jesus' enemies have stone hearts. While people are busy doing wicked things, they have forgotten the day of judgment. Baba ni wa ati is scorched and crowned with thorns. John 19, 1 to 3. So then Pilate took Jesus and whipped him. And the soldiers twisted a crown of thorns and put it on his head. And they put on him a purple robe. Then they said, Hail, King of the Jews. And they struck him with their hands, 
Pilate then went out again and said to them, Behold, I am bringing him out to you, that you may know that I found no fault in him. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you redeemed the world. Hail Mary, Mother of God, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, full of grace, pray for we sinners, and at the hour of our death. We should reflect on what I have just read. Even though Pilate had previously said of Jesus, I found no fault in him at all, and yet he commanded this severe, brutal punishment for a man he knew was innocent. Lord, grant us patience in times of suffering so that we may offer our lives as a sacrifice of praise. O oh, oh Christ, O oh my King, I am a you are my power and my shining light. I believe in God, the Father Almighty maker of heaven and earth. And in him is only some begotten our Lord Jesus Christ, who died on the cross, which we must remember that he died for our sin and is taking away all our infirmities, all our iniquities, he's taking it away. And he has promised that he will always renew us as ego. He's always with us. He will never depart from us. But Ba ba o ba ba o she and finish it. Ba ba o ba ba o she. Hallelujah. Station seven. Jesus carries his cross. And the text is John 19, 5 to 6 and 13 to 17. Then Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. And Pilate said to them, Behold the man. Therefore, when the chief priest and officers saw him, they cried out, saying, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, You take him and crucify him, for I found no fault in him. Verse 13. When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he brought Jesus out and sat down in the judgment seat in a place that is called the pavement, but in Hebrew, Gabbatha. Now it was the preparation day of the Passover and about the sixth hour. And he said to the Jews, Behold your king. But they cried out, cried out, Away with him, and away with him. Crucify him, Pilate said to them. Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. Then he delivered him to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus and led him away. And he, bearing his cross, went out to a place called the place of the skull, which is called Hebrew, Golfo. Thank you. 
this text, um, two things came to me, or shall I say two categories of people. There were the people that mocked him, and there were the people, uh, shall I, not even the people, one person, Pilate, he said that, behold your king. And I just want to ask us a question. What category do we belong to? In our life, in our mannerism, in the way we relate to one another. Are we part of the people that constantly reject him and mock him and say crucify him again? Or have we in totality accepted Christ as our king? Our tenant in Celestial Church of Christ says that we are kings. And it's funny when I look at the royal family, because they are a family that we're very familiar with. We see Roy, um, Prince Ari or Charles, the way they bring them up the way they relate to people, their appearance, the way they speak, everything is completely different because they know who they are and whose they are. So we must remember who we are and whose we are, that we belong to a king. And in, in this celestial church of Christ, we've been given our beautiful garment. Our women, we have our own crown. The men as well, when they receive a certain rank, they, up their, they have their own crown as well. We belong to a king. So in our life, in the way we, we, we live our life, in the way we relate to people, we must remember that we are peculiar people. We, are, we must not be able to act like a commoner. When you don't, when you see, if Prince Harry was to behave like a normal person on the street does, then everyone would be, if like a normal drunkard behave a certain way, you'd say, yeah, that's a normal person. But if someone of royalty behaves that way, you would think, no, that's, there's something wrong in that. So let's just remember who we are and remember have you, are you mocking Christ or have you accepted Christ as your king? Would you buy Siren helps Jesus to carry the cross. We shall be with them Mark 15, verse 21, Mark 8, verse 34, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 3. Mark 15, 21. And they called on Simon his Syrian, who passed by coming out of the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to bear his cross. Mark 8, 34. And when he had called the people unto him, with his disciples also, he said unto them, Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 3. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier. Now what? We will pick out from all these three verses. It's carrying your cross, enduring hardness, and be a good soldier of Christ. When we look at the journey, have a flashback of the journey on that particular day, Jesus carrying his cross. Let us remember something. By this time, let's say maybe it was 12 noon when he was carrying the cross, they had had supper the previous night at 8 o'clock. So you could imagine the kind of strength he had. 
he was very weak indeed and they made him to carry that cross which he did but at some point in time he became so weak he could not endure carrying the cross by himself anymore and they were they whipped him thinking maybe he was faking it or something but he could not carry the cross this is a lesson for you and I as we read in Mark 8.34 that you and I have a cross to carry and that we come a point in time where we cannot carry the cross alone we are going to need help somebody somewhere is going to come physically to help us but what I want to point out is this which is very common amongst us when somebody is carrying their cross because if we look at Luke chapter 9 verse 23 he says this cross is something we carry daily it's a daily cross that we have to carry that means you have challenges you have situations which you are going through there are people that must have been laughing at Jesus when he was carrying the cross so for you and I don't let us laugh at anyone when they're carrying the cross we have a cross to carry you have a cross to carry I have a cross to carry there's no point of you laughing at me or me laughing at you you are to help each other to carry the cross I want to call for a Christ I want to second Timothy he says we should endure hardness as a good soldier whatever situation you might be going through I do implore you endure as a good soldier of Christ because your Savior coming to redeem you and I believe as he said and as he promised and as we heard during the service of nine o'clock today he knows about our situations and he will always and every time always see us through May the Lord help us to carry our cross daily. May you help us at the end to gain the kingdom of heaven. Run me, Lord. Jesus meets the women of Jerusalem. This will be found in Luke 23, 27-31. And it says, And there followed him a great company of people, and of women, which also bewailed and lamented him. But Jesus turning unto them said, 
daughters of Jerusalem, weep not for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For behold, the days are coming in the which they shall say, blessed are the barren and the wombs that never bore and the paths which never give suck. Then shall they begin to say to the mountains, fall on us and to the hills cover us. For if they do these things in a green tree, what shall be done in the day? Hallelujah. Jesus knows that women are special. He knows we're query and he knows we're conscientious. But he also knows that if in those days they can do those terrible things to someone that has supernatural power, how much will they do to a mortal body? Jesus knows that as we mothers, women, and carers of home, church of God, we cannot afford to be busybody. We have been given many aptitude, many empowerment. Let us use them. Look after our homes. Be prayerful. Be conscientious. And above all, all the world that God has given to us. My mother of blessed memory, my Marquito, you said, we women, we have been given the aptitude of Holy Spirit. We can, do function, we can do many things at the same time. So when we are caring for ourselves, we care for our home, we care for our church, we care for our community. So the aptitude, the empowerment we've been given, let, the, let us use them appropriately. The gift that we've been given, let us use them appropriately. May the Lord help us, empower us, and may we be that virtuous woman that he has created us to be. Glory be to his holy name on high. Jesu Omolahu Badira for me Jesu Omolahu Badira for me Jesu Omolahu Badira for me Station 10, Jesus is crucified. And this is found in the book of Luke, Luke chapter number 23, only from verses 33 to 34. Two verses. I'll take that again. Luke 23, Luke chapter 23, verse 33 to 34. And it goes as follows. And when they were come to the place, which is called Calvary, there they crucified him. And the malefactors, uh, the meaning of malefactors is um, somebody is a criminal or somebody is an evildoer. And the malefactors, one on the right hand and the other on the left. Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment and cast lots. Dear Celestians, there is a great thing to learn from these verses I have just read. The thing is forgiveness. 
Have we asked ourselves those simple questions? Do we forgive one another? In our homes? Do we forgive our relations? Do we forgive our friends? Even our children? Many parents, including fathers, mothers particularly, your own child will offend you and then you will cause it on the child. Oh, look, babe. Next week, the child offends you. You say the same thing. The other week, the child offends the father. The father says the same thing. How many of you have been? three. And they will begin to build up, build up, build up. Over years, begin to build up. This tongue, you say, is coated with powers. We must use these powers graciously, according to the will and purposes of God. I'm using this opportunity to appeal to parents. You curse your children every time. By the time it manifests, maybe in 15 years' time, you may not even remember again. And then you begin to cry and cry and cry. You have forgotten that it's because of the real pain you said many, many years back. You and your husband said, which is the father of the baby. So please, if Christ, if with all the agonies and uncreamness, that he passed through and he was able to still say from his mouth, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they are doing. Then who are you, a mother, a father, that will not forgive your own child? Your child will do something you place a curse on him. May the Lord help us to go through the spirit of forgiveness in the name of Jesus. This is session 11, Jesus Promises the Kingdom, and this is Luke 23, 39 to 43. And one of the malefactors, which were hanged, railed on him, saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. But the other, answering, rebuked him, saying, Dost thou not fear God, seeing thou art to say in art in the same condemnation, and we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man hath done nothing amiss. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest to thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily, I say unto thee, thou, today thou shalt be with me in paradise. May that be our portion in Jesus' name. The fundamental story of this one is redemption. When all is lost, there is still hope. Jesus did not come to condemn us. He came to forgive us. In the ultimate act of sacrifice, and even in this moment, Jesus was able to provide forgiveness and assurance of everlasting paradise. And this is especially exemplified in 1 John 1 to 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And as a takeaway, there is no such thing as too late. If even in our final moments we can find the strength to ask for forgiveness, God is there. And with Jesus' own assurances, we will gain the kingdom of heaven in Jesus' name.
Station 12. Jesus on the cross, his mother and his friend. John 19, 25 to 27. Now there stood by the cross of Jesus, his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas and Mary Madeline. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing by, he said to his mother, woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, behold your mother. From that hour, that disciple took her to his own home. No mother wants to see their child suffer. Imagine how Mary felt when she saw Jesus being whipped and crucified. Jesus endured the pain and paid the price for us that we may be saved. Hallelujah. This is Station 13. Jesus stands on the cross. Luke chapter 23, verses 40, verses 44 to 46. Luke chapter 23, verses 44 to 46. And there was and there was about the sixth hour, and there was darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour, and the sun was darkened, and the veil of the temple was rent in the mist. And when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, "Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit." And having said thus, he gave up the ghost. When it, this is saying that Jesus died. Jesus died for us, uh, saying that we should not we should not take this in vain, that we should not just be remembered this now, that we should remember that he came to die for us throughout the whole year, not just through this week. It's saying that we that access to God is through Jesus, that to get to that to get to God we need to go through Jesus. Jesus loves me, this I know. Jesus loves me, this I know. Can we please sing Jesu Ferry? Jesu Ferry, no more bad. is laid in the tomb. Reading from Matthew 27, 57 to 61. Matthew chapter 27, verses 57 to 61. When the evening was come, there came a rich man of Arimathea, named Joseph, who also himself was Jesus' disciple. He went to Pilate and begged the body of Jesus. Then Pilate commanded the body to be delivered. And when Joseph had taken the body, he wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hoed out of the rock, and he rolled a great stone to the door of the sepulchre and departed. And there was Mary Magdalene and the other Mary sitting over against the sepulchre. When I read this, at first, I wasn't sure what to say. 
And then I, after I prayed for inspiration, I looked at it and thought, what were the people there feeling? What were they thinking at that time? At that time, the disciples had scattered. All those that followed Jesus had left him and he was alone and he died alone. And I thought, okay, so what does that mean for us? And from that, I wrote a poem which reads, Come and see, come and see. Here lies the son of man, the king betrayed, reduced to a pile of flesh and bone. Here he lies alone. Come and see, come and see. How the devil laughs at their tears, his smile in victory. The people have lost their savior, gone to the dark. But behold, see those that know the scriptures, the true believers who lie in wait, waiting for the fulfillment of his word, for the conqueror of death to rise, to enter the light, here he lies. And then again, when I looked at the verses, I was reminded again, that look at Joseph. He made his own tomb, he had his tomb ready, and that was his own. And in his belief, in his faith for Jesus, he gave it up. He placed all that he had and gave it to Christ. And from there, I was seeing. No feet, no more, fool. What's that, what's that, like who? Eat what more, could you go more? Oh, but I be silent. Feet, no more, fool. What's that, what's that, like who? me Jesus is risen from the dead. Matthew 28, 5, 6. It says, And the angel answered unto the woman, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen. And he said, Come, See the place where the Lord laid. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For his reason, he is no more there. Hallelujah. And he called them to witness it. The Lamb of God that took away the sins of the world. Moti we, 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 moti was a situation when the statement says someone for himself 
that believed solely in God. Jesus knew he was to be crucified. He was going to die. But yet, he was still standing. Believing that he had an everlasting king of glory. When you have experienced God for yourself, do not look at the situation you are. The Bible made me to understand. It says that weeping may endure for a moment, but joy cometh in the night. Jesus Christ, at the point of death, was still standing. When we are in a situation that is unfavorable, God is not unfair. All you have to see is that God is a master planner. When we are in the position of authority, let us understand that there is a higher authority. God is a master planner. It is He that formed us and not us ourselves. He is our maker. He carried the cross until the end. He never knew what the outcome was going to be, but he believed solely in his father. And that's so, that leads me to a song that says, Testify to the word of God. The purpose why Jesus, the purpose of Jesus on earth, he did a lot of work in his own time, but because of their own belief, they didn't believe him. But he was the Savior, the Lamb of God, that took away the sins of the world. Revelation 21 3. He says, I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of man is with men, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall no more there shall be no more death, neither sorrow. No crying. Neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things are passed away. And he that sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And take that takes me to the song that I use in ending it. It says, Calvary saw me the tomb.
Hallelujah. 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 Can we all give them a round of applause, please? I, I, I know we are fasting, but can we give Jesus a round of applause? And can we let it be resoundingly? It is not an easy thing to stand before an audience to present something. And I tell you what, when you're talking about the word of life, the word of God, you're not just standing before people that you can see. You are standing before people that cannot be seen. And people who do not want that message to go out. Because you can say it's a drama, you can say it's a play, you can say it's a presentation. But it is a message of salvation. It's a message that is enough to deliver people from the snare of death. It's my prayer that as God has used you all for this, his promises for your life will be fulfilled in Jesus' name. Amen. And be found in the book of life in Jesus' name. I want to appreciate everyone that has put this together, including those who are unable to make it because of the condition of our church, that they have to abstain from church for a reason, and those who try to but they don't have the, it's not possible. And those who are drafted in, even at the last minute, God has seen your labor of law, and he will reward your labor of law. The essence of these stations of the cross is just to remind us what our Lord Jesus went through, and what we as Christians should hold on to, that indeed, our hope in Christ is not just in this world but even for the world to come. And if we are sure of that, we should live a life that reflects that. All the participants, can you please come to the front? To the front, please. Can you please come to the front? Can you please come to the And as you are coming, please give them a round of applause. Can you please come to the front? Come together. I want to take a, a good picture. Come together. And it's not easy to direct something like this. So as a director, I'm the one that makes you want to speak to if they want to put this on their thing. And you know? Yeah, so let me ask you myself for a while. Yeah. <laughs> Go, let's see your faces. Come together, please. Come together. You want to see all your faces, please? Uh -huh. I know you are fasting, but give us a smile now. Thank you. Give them a round of applause once again. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Stand up, stand up, sit on the floor, my friend. Sit on the floor. Thank you, thank you to all our paparazzis in there. Ah, ah. Thank you, thank you. I get you. Why are we here? Yeah, that's nice. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you.
Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And before, there will be other presentations that we want to do. Not today. Not today. Well, I will call on you. I want to call on you. Please answer. And also, I want to use this this opportunity to. I want to use this opportunity to inform us that actually this parish, Elevon and Castle Parish, has a drama unit. And the essence of the drama unit is to showcase God. So if God has put in you a talent that you have been hiding, like the man that was given one talent, and you have seen buried in the ground, I think it's high time to get it out of the ground and invest it and bring something out of it. If you're interested, please see us and we'll direct you to the appropriate quarters. And also we want to use the opportunity to remind us that in July, as it is our custom, the second Friday in the month of July, we'll be having a Baraka uh, outreach annual outrage and this year the team is i am free indeed i know it's not yet out and i kind of put it out because he has come to set us free and indeed we are free so let's mark that date in our diary and that day also promises to be exciting and full of prophetic declaration word administration song administration and i'm sure the lord will touch your heart and he will minister to your soul as you come God bless us all. And as this is our custom, on a day like this, we always talk among ourselves. We have all seen the station of the cross. If you have any comment you want to say on it, two, three minutes, the floor is open. If there's anything you want to know, you see on this side, I have my fathers, I have my mothers, I have people who are, whose IQ is higher than that of mine. Me, I'm still learning. And I'm sure they will answer your question. If you have anything that you want, anything bothering you, why do we do this? Why do we do that? What is your essence of this? This is the time to ask. And I'm sure you will get an answer. Not an opinion. You will get an answer. Because the world is in, in our midst has the answer to everything. Hallelujah. 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 I know when we say this kind of thing, people will always wait for the first person to ask questions. And they wait. And then that person will ask the question they will answer. By the time it's now quarter to three or ten to three, every hand is now up. They want to ask questions. And then but we have to do service. Uh -huh. Yes, ma'am. It doesn't have to be a question. Hallelujah. 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 To God be all the glory, I am so impressed and um, quite moved by the short clips that, I mean, I would say clips, you know, by the short drama. At first, when they said started and, you know, and I thought, these are not the, actually the session of the course, but when you go along with them in spirit, then you realize that it's not only acting a drama, is a way of bringing a message to each and every one of us, something for us to learn from. Yes, we all know the story of the Station of the Cross. We all know the story of Good Friday. We all know Jesus Christ came to die for humanity. But then many of us will observe Good Friday, like my Samana Rally said, after today we've forgotten all about what Jesus came to do. It's no more. It's a cycle. But then, in our reflection, I was so moved and I was so inspired by the messages that were coming forth. And all I can say to the team or to the organizers of this is something if you can please, please repeat this on a yearly basis. The only thing, the only comment that I have is don't let it be too lengthy. Because when you, when you pass in a message and it's too voluminous, people will lose interest. 
I now got to a point that they, you know, they shorten the ball. For the first five or six stations, you know, the, the, the messages were just too many. And, you know, people's concentration, you know, they, they don't, it doesn't last that much. Other than that, you know, well done and we're all impressed. God bless you. Thank you very much. We will take that on board. Hallelujah. 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 I'm so customary to the hallelujah. That's why I'm sorry about that. Now, the most dying question in my mind is not to us those um, that gave the presentation per se, but the issue that burning in my mind is the question is for me. And maybe the question, because sometimes question itself can be very, um, uh, is something that is infect infectious. The question I'm asking is infectious, really. The reason I say it's infectious is what is this Easter has to do with me? We have heard about our Lord Jesus Christ died on the crucifix and shedding of the blood and all these things that happen in the scripture. But the question is, does our God need the blood to forgive us? That is the first question, because our, we know that our Lord doesn't eat blood, does he? No. Because this is a reflective question. I said the question is for me, but it's infectious. You know what infection disease means? That is, it can contagious to you. If you ask yourself, do our God need blood to forgive us? But for me, when I find answer within myself, hmm? when I, hallelujah, don't ask somebody else, I say, it's an infectious question, ask yourself. But the answer I find within myself is what I want to tell you. I said to myself that God is just demonstrating to us that what is very sensitive to me, the most precious thing to me. If you think about what is precious to me in this church, probably my wife. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us think to it. Maybe my job. Maybe my life. So, if you take my wife, or if you want to take my life, or you want to take my job, I will fight you so much. So, if somebody wants to do that, but if God can only give the only child and shed the blood because of you and I, because of the sin that does not partake in it, he doesn't know how he come about it, and he just die like that. For us, as the modern people, we say it's a senseless death. But it's not. It's just demonstrating to us that there's nothing that is too big, nothing that is too precious that you should not be able to give. If somebody take your husband, will you be the reason why you should not forgive? If somebody take your house, would that be the reason why you cannot forgive? If somebody has done something so serious, in your sin against you, is that the reason why you should not forgive? That is my own question. There's nothing, absolutely nothing you can do to me why I should not forgive you. Because if Jesus Christ will die, shed the blood because of the sin he has not committed, why can't you forgive me? Why can't I forgive you? Why can't I be your friend? Why can't you I love you? Why can't you love me? That is the question. It's the infectious question. Answer it in your own mind. Thank you. No, he just asked a question. <laughs> Okay. 
Two minutes, sir. One minute, okay, one minute. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes. Alaba. Ola Biju. Ola Ru, Bowo. Kosi Bobi. Kosi Bayama Kokolo, Riko Jerio. I don't know, I'll call you barbecue. Nothing she will go off for this time. I'm always ready. She. Oh, no, Bowo. Go Bayama. Go Barais. But I'm looking at you. I'm a boy. Every year. Like this, she's she's very capable. I do yard one, eh? She, eh? Rice every year like this. Kaba kikariye, kama jemlo. All right, all right. I I bought one question. Tell me, baby, me. All along, God does not eat whatever you provide. If you kill a ram, it's not going to eat it. The fact that our Lord Jesus Christ was crucified, and then we, we keep saying to ourselves, uh, dip us in the blood of Jesus, turn this water in the blood of Jesus. How many have you seen the, when you pray that that water turns to you, uh, the blood of Jesus? Uh, how many? Uh, uh, okay, hold on, hold on. So, I, I'm telling you categorically that it wasn't because God likes blood that our Lord Jesus Christ was made to go through all the sufferings and